everyone. My name is Dr. Samantha Zara, and I am the Antibody Services Marketing Specialist at Genscript. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Cecilia Mariganati, Associate Product Manager of Genscript's Antibody Services, to present today's webinar, Rabbit Monoclonal Antibodies in Tissue Diagnostics. During this webinar, Dr. Mariganati will give an overview of rabbit monoclonal antibodies and their generation, an introduction to tissue-based in vitro diagnostics, and highlight the benefits of using rabbit monoclonal antibodies in these technologies. Dr. Cecilia Mariganati is the Associate Product Manager of Antibody Reagent Services at Genscript USA Incorporated. Dr. Mariganati holds a PhD degree in pharmacology from the University of Heidelberg, Germany. He worked as an application scientist slash product lead with Enzo Life Sciences on development of in vitro diagnostics, such as immunohistochemistry, in situ hybridization, and ELISA. He has done multiple postdoctoral fellowships focusing on vascular occlusions and chronic stroke at Yale, Northwestern University, Louisiana State University, and the University of Manchester. To ensure that this webinar has high sound quality, we ask that all the attendees please put their microphones on listening only mode. Also, please feel free to type in your questions in the chat box in the lower right corner of your screen throughout the talk. Dr. Mergenati will address your questions at the conclusion of the presentation. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Mergenati to present today's webinar, Rabbit Monoclonal Antibodies in Tissue Diagnostics. Thank you, Dr. Zara, for the introduction, and uh, thank you, everyone, for attending this webinar. As mentioned, I will talk about Rabbit Monoclonal Antibodies in Tissue Diagnostics. This is the outline of my presentation. I will give an overview on rabbit monoclonal antibodies, technologies for generating rabbit monoclonal antibodies, in vitro diagnostics, uh, including the tissue diagnostics, rabbit monoclonal antibodies in tissue-based IVD, and GenScript antibody services at the end. In part one, I will cover an introduction to rabbit monoclonal antibodies why rabbit monoclonal antibodies are superior compared to other model species and differentiating factors of rabbit IgG. When it comes to antibodies, researchers always have concerns for how well their antibody will work in their experiments. Some common issues with rodent monoclonal antibodies include immunoreactivity, sensitivity, and specificity. Immunoreactivity for small antigens, such as transmembrane proteins or protein sequence variation, cannot trigger an immune response in mice and rats, leading to minimal antibody production. Antibodies with low sensitivity will have reduced affinity for the target antigen, and therefore lead to significantly low levels of resulting signal. In terms of specificity, the rodent immune system is unable to differentiate between similar epitopes, leading to antibodies which may pick up a large amount of background. However, you can avoid many of these issues by using rabbit monoclonal antibodies rather than rodent. Generating monoclonal antibodies in rabbits can significantly improve the immunoreactivity, sensitivity, and specificity of any antibody. This is because, unlike rodents, the affinity of rabbit monoclonal antibodies can reach picomolar level, whereas murine antibodies are typically around the nanomolar level, as shown here. Allowing for higher working dilution and strong antigen, um, antigen antibody binding. Rabbit monoclonal antibodies also have high specificity and high diversity, allowing rabbit monoclonal antibodies to yield excellent results in applications such as pharmacokinetic PK studies and in vitro diagnostics, which is called IVD, with limited cross reactivity of non specific targets. Now that I have discussed some benefits of using rabbit monoclonal antibodies, I would like to give a little more information as to why rabbit monoclonal antibodies make 
such amazing uh, reagent. The rabbit evolutionary, the rabbit's evolutionary distance from human is further than that of rodents, allowing the rabbit immune system to generate monoclonal antibodies against human antigens, commonly non immune in mice. Laboratory rabbits also have high genetic heterogeneity because compared to rodents, they are not only, they are not nearly as inbred. Specifically, most laboratory rabbits, rabbits will be New Zealand white strain commonly used in research activities. And European rabbits, which are used for therapeutic antibodies. Rabbits also contain different mechanisms to generate their primary and secondary antibody repertoires compared with rodents. Lastly, compared with rodents, which only have one, the rabbit's immune system contains five CD1 antigen present molecules, allowing for a strong immune response against small molecules. Sequence diversification and a large antibody repertoire. Rabbit antibodies also have significantly different IgGs compared with rodent, allowing for their superior features. However, before I go over the rabbit IgG, I would like to review the overall structure of common IgGs. IgG is the most common type of antibody found in blood. IgG antibodies are large molecules of about 150 kilodalton made of four peptide chains. They contain two identical gamma class heavy chains of about 50 kilodalton and two identical light chains of about 25 kilodalton having a tetrameric quaternary structure. The two heavy chains are linked to each other by disulfide bonds within the hinge region. The resulting tetramer has two identical halves, which together form the Y-like shape, as shown here. The various regions and domains of a typical IgG are depicted here. Each IgG has two identical antigen binding sites containing the variable domains of one heavy and one light chain. Each variable domain contains three hypervariable complementary determining regions, which is also called CDRs, that determines antigen binding capacity. The IgG FPAB region contains the FV variable domain plus the constant region of one heavy and one light chain. The base of the IgG contains the FC constant region for effector binding. Sometimes uh, researchers may alter the structure of IgGs in order to enhance an antibody binding in certain applications. One of these altered structures is the single chain variable fragment or called SCF3. The SCFV is composed of a single FV region connected together through a small peptide linker, as shown here. And rabbit IgGs are composed slightly different than rodent IgGs, allowing for their superior binding capabilities. First, rabbit IgGs contain special intrachain disulfide bonds as depicted in orange, allowing for increased stability in difficult environments. Secondly, rabbit CDRs are longer and have more variation, leading to increased specificity and antibody diversity. Lastly, rabbit IEGs have three different light chain formats. 90% of them are IgG kappa 1, 10% of them are IgG kappa 2, and only 1% of them are IgG lambda. That increase with increasing antibody diversity. This is a case study showing uh, the difference between the mouse monoclonal antibodies and rabbit monoclonal antibodies uh, using the, the 
the primary antibody beta actin. And red in red here, you can see mouse monoclonal antibody. And green, you can see the rabbit monoclonal antibodies. And the co-localization of both antibodies can be uh, seen on the right. Where the rabbit monoclonal antibody, which is in green, is highly expressed and it's more sensitive where the mouse monoclonal antibody could not able to detect some of the uh, epitopes, but the rabbit can be detected as shown in the uh, arrows here. In part two of my talk, I will review various technologies used to generate rabbit monoclonal antibodies. Currently, there are three major platforms or technologies for generating rabbit monoclonal antibodies. Those are phase display technology, hybridoma approach, and single beta based methods. All three technologies involve rabbit immunization with target antigen. During phase display, rabbit antibody heavy chains and light chains are amplified and randomly paired to form new rabbit sequences to screen for positive binders. Rabbits are immunized with antigen and the resulting B cells are isolated and used for variable region sequences. Combinations of variable heavy and variable light chains are then cloned into a vector containing an expression cassette for bacteriophage core protein. The vector is then used for bacterial transfection in order to generate a library of bacteriophages whose protein code now contains monoclonal antibody variable region. Specific antigen binding FV expressing phase particles are then selected for uh, recombinant expression and uh, subsequent full length monoclonal antibody generation. When deciding on the FV on a bacteriophage, the FVAB region is considered a better choice than a SCFV due to its higher expression level, allowing for a larger quantity of purified antibodies. Uh, here, I have shown the advantages and disadvantages of each technology. Uh, for example, for phase display, it has faster steps with variable regions when compared to hybridoma, um, which I'll discuss in the next slide. And with the phase display, you can generate multiple binders for different antigens at the same time. And also, it can the further genetic engineering can be done. The disadvantages are as mentioned, so FAB is better than SCFV. And uh, it doesn't have the natural cognate pairing of H and L chain. And it is expensive compared to hybridoma technology. And uh, it identifies binders regardless of the immunogenic property. When generating monoclonal antibodies uh, using the hybridoma approach, Rabbit B cells and splenocytes are fused with myeloma cells in order to generate hybridomas, as shown here. Hybridomas are immortalized mature B cells with antibodies present on the surface. Once formed, the hybridomas are screened multiple times for positive binders. Once positive binders are identified, the hybridomas are expanded and used for antibody presentation. As you can see, the advantages and disadvantages of hybridoma technology, it has excellent immunogenic property and is less expensive among other technologies. And further genetic engineering uh, can be done with this technology as well. And compared to phase display, the duration is uh, long, which takes five months time. And it has the low efficiency of cell fusion and the multiple binders for one anti only one antigen can be uh, done in this, using this technology. Uh, next, in single B cell sorting, B cells are isolated from a rabbit immunized with target antigen 
and sorted into micro wells by PAC, which is flow cytometry technology. The resulting single B cells are used for subsequent binder screening. And once the positive binders are identified, the B cells will go through V region sequencing. The resulting V region sequences are then used for recombinant monoclonal antibody expression. As mentioned, the advantages and disadvantages, it has a faster turnaround time and uh, which takes like three weeks time, widely used uh, in therapeutic uh, antibody production. It can preserve the natural cognate pairing and generate monoclonal antibodies with attractive affinity and further genetic engineering can be done using this technology. The major disadvantage is it's very, very expensive compared to uh, hybridoma and uh, phase distal. I will now summarize the key aspect of generating rabbit monoclonal antibodies by phase display, hybridoma, and single B cell sorting. In terms of turnaround time, single B cell sorting is the fastest. However, some versions of phase display may allow for reduced turnaround time. In terms of antibody chain pairing, both the hybridoma and single B cell technologies generate naive chain, whereas the chain generated from phase display will be mixed. In general, the affinity of monoclonal antibody generated through phase display will be lower than those produced using hybridoma or single B cell technology. Whereas single B cell sorting seems to produce antibodies with the highest diversity. However, the hybridoma approach is the most cost effective compared with the other two technologies. In the third uh, section of my presentation, I will introduce in vitro diagnostics or IVD and tissue diagnostics. Specifically, I will give a general overview of IVD and how it is presented as well as FDA approved rabbit monoclonal antibody diagnostics. In vitro diagnostics, or simply called IVD, are the analysis of patient samples outside the body in order to identify disease state. It can be divided into six distinct segments, as shown here. The first, the immunochemistry involves using components of the immune system to study patient samples. It is commonly used for clinical immunology and uh, also for the biochemical test. Point of care testing, which is simply called POC, involves in any laboratory tests that are performed on a patient uh, and at the site where treatment is provided and therefore must occur rapidly. Hematology is another one which uh, deals with the physiology of the blood. And molecular diagnostics are tests which analyze the levels of molecular-based molecules in patient samples, such as genes and RNA. Clinical microbiology is concerned with the prevention of diagnosis and treatment of infectious diseases caused by microorganisms. Lastly, the tissue diagnostics are an analysis of small samples of tissue to determine the presence or absence of cancer, infection, or inflammation. For the rest of my talk, I will be covering how rabbit monoclonal antibodies are used in tissue diagnostics. Tissue diagnostics can be segmented based on the application, the disease, or the end user. One of the major applications is anatomical pathology which is the analysis of disease progression by monitoring changes in patients, patient samples. Anatomical pathology covers major applications such as hematoxylin and eosin staining, which is simply called HNE staining. And immunohistochemistry 
IHC, which is called IHC, and in situ hybridization uh, ish, and a more a more modern application of tissue diagnostics is digital pathology, allowing physicians to rapidly retrieve data to computational analysis of patient tissue. In my next few slides, I will show I'll show you some experimental approaches and examples of HNE staining, IHC, YISH, and digital pathology. Hematoxylin is a deep purple stain for nucleic acid, and eosin is a pink acidic dye, which stains proteins non-specifically. When most tissues are dyed with both hematoxylin and eosin, the nuclei will stain purple because of the nuclei's high nucleic acid content, and the cytoplasm and extracellular matrix with stain with varying degrees of pink as shown below. These images are liver tissues, liver tissue stained with hematoxylin and eosin simultaneously. The figure on the left depicts focal necrosis and inflammation as shown by the invasion of nuclei from the outside of the liver towards the center. The figure on the right de depicts an apoptotic cell which did not rupture as shown by the large amount of pink staining absorbed in one large circle. And in immunofluorescence, the DAPI will be used as a uh, nuclear stain. Immunohistochemistry is widely used in the diagnosis of abnormal cells, such as those found in cancerous tumors. It is used to understand the distribution and localization of biomarkers and differentially expressed proteins in different, part of, in different parts of biological tissue. Depicted here is a simple schematic showing the process of IHC. First, a tissue is incubated with a primary antibody known to bind a specific antigen then a secondary antibody is used to bind to the primary antibody in order to enhance the final signal. Third, an additional antibody is added which binds to the secondary antibody and contains a visualization probe such as horse radius peroxidase in this case. Uh, finally, the visualization probe is activated in order to see exactly the amount of and where a specific antigen is located. Here is an example showing I had seen mouse liver tissue. The top image shows IgG isotype negative control and the bottom image is stained with rabbit beta actin showing a strong visualization within the membrane and cytoplasm. There are multiplex IHC uh, tests are available, uh, but only used in the research, but not in the clinical diagnostic test. IHC and ISH are semi-quantitative methods to provide diagnosis by a pathologist. But recently, researchers have developed a computerized technology able to generate fully quantitative analysis of IHC and ish images, known as digital pathology. Sorry, I missed this slide. Um, within the, okay, so IHC and ish, yes. As, uh, so sorry uh, for the uh, for missing this slide. So here I would like to uh, talk about the in situ hybridization. As stated previously, IHC is commonly used to identify the location and quantity of protein antigen within the tissue. If you are interested in visualizing the
the location and quantity of nucleic acid, you have to use in situ hybridization. It's simply called ISH. ISH is performed similar to IHC. However, the rabbit monoclonal antibodies will be used as a secondary antibody or simply for detection. The example shown on the right is an ish image depicting chromosomal abnormality due to the HPV infection in cervical tissue. Ish uh, can be divided in many types, like chromogen chromogenic in situ hybridization, uh, silver staining in, in situ hybridization, or fluorescence in situ hybridization. IHC and ISH are semi-quantitative methods to provide diagnosis by a pathologist. But recently, researchers have developed a computerized technology able to generate fully quantitative analysis of IHC and ISH images known as digital pathology. With the advent of whole flight mm -hmm. imaging, the field of digital pathology has exploded and is currently regarded as one of the most promising avenues of diagnostic medicine. This is because it has the cap capability to achieve stronger, faster, and cheaper diagnosis, prognosis, and prediction of numerous diseases. The main advantage of anatomical pathology is the pathologist's advanced ability to interpret complex architecture However, it also has certain limitations, including continuous core computation, visual and cognitive traps, unintentional bias, and inconsistency between decisions. Digital pathology provides objective and consistent staining rules due to its computational power. However, it also has a lack of cognitive knowledge to interpret Architecture. Given the strength of rabbit monoclonal antibodies based on the FDA has approved numerous IVD kits in the past 18 years. The first rabbit monoclonal antibody based tissue IVD was approved by the FDA in 2000 as a means of detecting the breast cancer biomarker HCR2 in patient samples which is also called HER2. Since this time, numerous rabbit monoclonal antibody-based tissue IVD kits have been developed and approved, including multiple kits to localize and quantify the immuno-oncology biomarker like PD-1, PDL, PD-1, PDL-1. I just gave numerous examples of applications for tissue-based IVDs now I would like to show some case studies showing the use of rabbit monoclonal antibodies in tissue-based IVD and their advantages when compared with rodent monoclonal antibodies. Rabbit monoclonal antibodies are known to be the preferred reagent for IHC-based exper experiments due to their strong affinity, low background, and high signal intensity. Rabbits can also generate high-quality monoclonal antibodies against difficult antigens, such as small molecules, transmembrane proteins, and highly similar antigens. This case study shows IHC images taken using a mouse monoclonal antibody, shown in A, a rabbit, rabbit polyclonal antibody, shown in B, and a rabbit monoclonal antibody shown in C in breast cancer tissue against the breast cancer biomarker HER2. As you can see in figure C, the rabbit monoclonal antibody shows much stronger visualization compared with the mouse monoclonal or, or the rabbit polyclonal antibody. The quantitative pathologist grading for this analysis is shown in the next slide. In the analyzed breast cancer tissue, the rabbit monoclonal antibody showed higher graded images than those carried out with the 
mouse monoclonal antibody or rabbit, rabbit polyclonal antibody. The rabbit monoclonal antibody also showed a much higher correlation with the chromogenic in situ hybridization control than the mouse derived antibody. From this data, it was concluded that the rabbit anti HER2 monoclonal antibody has higher affinity, specificity, and sensitivity than the mouse monoclonal antibody or polyclonal antibody. And therefore, is the obvious choice to use in this tissue based IVD analysis. So, an extremely popular immuno oncology biomarker uh, nowadays is. PD1. PD1 is a receptor expressed on the surface of T cells, which, when activated, initiates an inhibitory effect on the T cell's activity. In order to circumvent the immune system, many tumors have developed PDL1 proteins on their surfaces, which can bind to T cells and activate an inhibitor mechanism. In order to diagnose or stage certain types of cancers, clinicians will use tissue-based IVDs in order to detect any levels of PDL1. The figure on the right shows a direct comparison of two PDL1 tissue IVD kits, one using a mouse monoclonal antibody and one using a rabbit monoclonal antibody. From the IHC images, it is clear that the rabbit monoclonal antibody is much better at detecting PDL1 and therefore should be used for future PDL1 or, or other immunocheckpoint based tissue IVD. Many tissue based IVDs focus on detecting PDL1 in cancerous tissue. Usually, a pathologist will have to analyze any resulting IHC images and try to quanti quantify the visual data to give his decision. However, recent advances in computer technology allow clinicians to receive fully quantified data analysis of IHC images using digital pathology platforms. The case study shown here depicts an untouched IHC image read by a pathologist as well as a digitally marked image used for digital pathological analysis. As shown in the final table, both the pathologist and the digital system showed almost identical scoring of the cancerous tissue. This study indicates that the novel digital pathology technology is equal to that of well-trusted pathologists. Thank you for your, uh, your attention during this webinar. I would now like to do an overview of Genscript's uh, custom antibody services. This is an overview of the antibody services we offer at Genscript. Besides the antibody drug discovery related services, which include the therapeutic antibody discovery platform, anti-idiotype, antibody generation, surrogate antibody, and immunogenicity assays. We also offer reagent antibody services for polyclonal antibody, monoclonal antibody, phosphospecific antibodies, neutralizing and blocking antibodies, as well as antibody pairing. We also offer more than 1,000 catalog antibodies, diagnostic antibodies, and immunoassay development, such as ELISA kit, for endogenous uh, protein detection, host cell protein detection, uh, PK and immunogenicity uh, evaluation as well. Genscript offers two types of polyclonal antibody generation services. The first service is our polyclonal antibody standard package. With, within this package, you can choose whether you would like to use our express or conventional immunization protocol, which host, which host species you would like to immunize, and if you would like to use 
a peptide R14 antigen, as shown here. This package takes between 11 to 17 weeks and includes delivery of your purified polyclonal antibody. The second service is our fully custom polyclonal antibody package. This service is similar to our standard package, but also includes an anti-serum delivery as well as the purified antibody with multiple types of purification protocols. Genscript's PolyExpress package also includes immunization with either a protein or peptide antigen. Our peptide antigen service includes immunization with up to three peptides each generating their own polyclonal antibody against different epitopes. Our protein antigen package includes immunization with a recombinant protein and as well as delivery of up to two polyclonal antibodies and one milligram of purified antigen. All PolyExpress packages are named so because they turn on time from antigen preparation to polyclonal antibody, delivery takes as little as 45 days. If you are sure what package suits you, here is a diagram that can help to decide. If you are dealing with a simple antigen and only need one or two working antibodies, Mono Express might be the service to go with. On the other hand, if you have particular requirement for immunization and screening, then the semi-customized package is probably a better choice. If this is still not enough, we can take it up to a higher level and provide an even more customized package with our fully customized service, our MonoRap. Genscript's, Genscript's Mono Express service can generate specific antibodies in as little as 45 days. Our Mono Express service services come in five distinct packages shown here. Our highest tier Mono Express package includes protein antigen generation as well as supernatant screening in your own lab and a final delivery including up to five hybridoma cell lines. Similar to our PolyExpress packages, the MonoExpress packages can also be separated by the amount of peptide sequences used as antigen and the amount of immunized animals. All of these packages include up to two hybridoma cell lines per peptide antigen as well as supernatant and unconjugated peptides. Genscript's semi-custom monoclonal antibody generation service is slightly more flexible than the MonoExpress services. For example, this service can include either protein or peptide antigen along with Genscript's ImmunoPlus technology. You can also decide if you would, if you would prefer the express immunization protocol or the more traditional including longer periods between boots and additional test leads. This package also includes the mild way delivery of up to 20 parental supernatants for in-house testing, followed by the delivery of two clients chosen hybridoma cell lines and purified monoclonal antibody. Genscript's fully custom monoclonal antibody generation service is tailored to include anything and everything you would want in your monoclonal antibody generation process. You are in charge of defining key steps in the antibody development process, including immunization schedule, arsenal screening, in-house analysis, number of clones, independent antibody validation, and anything else you can think of. This service also includes free cell banking for six months, as well as additional options, such as antibody sequencing and scale up production, making Genscript's fully custom monoclonal antibody generation service 
perfect for any experimental platform. Genscript's exclusive MonoRab service generates the highest quality rabbit monoclonal antibody. Using our proprietary heterohybridoma technology in combination with the rabbit incredible immune system, we can generate the highest sensitivity and highest specificity monoclonal antibodies on the market. Genscript generated rabbit monoclonal antibodies are perfect for everything from basic research all the way to anti-idiotype antibody development or in vitro diagnostics. Check out our GenStrips website to learn more about our capabilities for generating rabbit monoclonal antibodies against difficult targets, including nanobodies, small molecules, and phosphorylated targets, as well as our application-tailored services for IHC, ESPFV generation, and also uh, for anti-idiotype antibodies. Since this is the end of my talk, I would just like to review a few key messages I hope you can take with you. First off, rabbit monoclonal antibodies have a significantly higher affinity, specificity, and sensitivity than those uh, generated in rodents. Next, rabbits have diverse antibody repertoire as well as greater response to small antigens. Also, generating a rabbit monoclonal antibody can be accomplished through hybridoma, phase display, and single B-cell cloning technology. Next, the usage of rabbit monoclonal antibodies are increasing in tissue diagnostics and in immunohistochemistry in order to provide precision diagnosis for patient treatment. Also, digital pathology, quantitative analysis may provide accurate and reproducible data, same as pathologists, and most importantly, GenScript provides one-stop solution for custom antibody generation. And I would like to thank you for your attention, and I hope you have learned something useful for your antibody projects. With that, I will pass the ball to Dr. Zara for the Q&A session, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Dr. Mercanati, for such an informative talk, and thank you all for attending this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. Now that it's time for the Q&A session, I would like to let everyone know to please put their questions in the chat box at the bottom of your screen. We are running low on time, but I do promise that if you put your questions in the chat box, we will email you individually to let you know your answers. With that, let's get to the first question. In general, for which applications do rabbit monoclonal antibodies provide a better solution? So the rabbit monoclonal antibodies can be used in various applications. Um, as we have done a lot of case studies. For example, the pharmacokinetic studies, immunogenicity studies, uh, the uh, immunoassays such as ELISA, immunoprecipitation, and more extensively, you can use the antibodies for immunohistochemistry, immunofluorescence, or immunocytochemistry even. So these applications, uh, uh, in these applications, the rabbit monoclonal antibodies can be used uh, well, and it will give you the uh, diagnostic specificity uh, in any application. Thank you, Dr. Murakinati. Your next question is, what is the difference between GenScript's MonoRab platform and AbCam's RabMab platform? So, GenScript, um, so the GenScript MonoRab platform is very well customized and heterohybridoma technology. And on top of it, we have we have the hybridoma, heterohybridoma technology with the recombinant antibody uh, platform where we can deliver the sequences to the client. And whereas the OBCAM technology is also hybridoma based, uh, but they don't have 
the the sequence delivery, for example. And uh, Monorab, with the with the Monorab, compared to Arbcam service, it's uh, it's very uh, inexpensive, I would say. And uh, with the Monorab platform, if you want to do IHC applications, we could provide as many supernatants. Uh, uh, we can provide up to 30 supernatants, for example, with the Monorab platform. Thank you for answering that question. Your next question says, I'm interested in using rabbit or mouse antibodies for a diagnostic application. Where can I find more case studies for rabbit and mouse monoclonal antibodies when it comes to IHC for diagnostics? So there the are extensive uh, case studies, especially in the journals like uh, Modern Pathology, American Journal of Pathology, or uh, Journal of uh, uh, Modern Pathology as well. So there are multiple case studies. The researchers um, used rabbit monoclonal antibodies or mouse monoclonal antibodies, which are approved by the FDA, and they have done multiple uh, case studies comparing in various cancers, for example, breast cancer, lung cancers, or colon cancers, gastric cancers. So in various applications, uh, what I uh, have seen is, this, is that the rabbit monoclonal antibodies are the uh, best compared with the other species uh, antibodies. So you can uh, look into those journals and find many case studies. Thank you, that's a good suggestion. Um, your last question at this time is to describe the difference between IF and IHC. As you said, Rabbit is good for both applications. So uh, that's an interesting question. So the, in anatomical pathology, if people consider immunohistochemistry would cover the immunofluorescence and immunocytochemistry as well as one platform. But few researchers would differentiate the immunohistochemistry as a conventional or enzymatic uh, assay, uh, enzymatic uh, method, where you can use the uh, chromogen and substrate. But immunofluorescence is, is not needed uh, using these uh, substrate and chromogen uh, at the end. But in, in the immunofluorescence, you can use uh, the detection systems with where the fluorescence is tagged already. So where you don't have to do uh, any uh, developing development at the end. So the the rabbit monoclonal antibodies uh, mostly used as a primary antigen uh, primary antibodies uh, to detect the epitope or the antigen on the tissue. So no matter what what you use, like either either the immunohistochemistry or immunofluorescence, so this should work for both applications. Thank you, Dr. Murkinati, for answering the questions as well as for the wonderful presentation. At this time, we do have to end our webinar as we are at our one hour mark. If you have put questions in the chat box, we will make sure to answer them and send them out through email. And of course, if you have any questions or would like more information about GenScript's MonoRab platform or any of our other antibody or other services, please feel free to give us a email or a call at the emails you see next to you on the thank you slide or going to www.genscript.com. Thank you guys, have a nice day.